So the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. I want to talk about the fear of the Lord. There are seven spirits of God and the menorah is our paradigm. It talks about the seven spirits are the candle and the light of the Lord. We find it in the book of Revelations. I just want to do a little clip and not, um, I won't be giving direct scripture references, but you can look it up. The other one is in Isaiah, it talks about the seven spirits of God. And the important part that we often overlook and because we're not comfortable with it is the fact that um, the fear of the Lord is often ignored, but it's the first thing. It says the fear of the Lord leads to knowledge. That's in Proverbs. The fear of the Lord leads to wisdom. That's in uh, Psalms. And we need the wisdom of the Lord. We're always asking for wisdom. And the Lord said in the word, especially in James, that he gives us abundantly. But the prerequisite is the fear of the Lord. And um, if the fear of the Lord is the first thing that we're to have in order to get knowledge and wisdom and understanding, might and power, um, which are all part of the seven spirits of God, the candle in the menorah, the center is the spirit of the Lord. And then you have the other lights going up, understanding and knowledge, power and might, the fear of the Lord and counsel. So if we want all four, we need the fear of the Lord as the, as the beginning. And that is the holy reverence of awe because our God is merciful, but he is also fearful to be feared because he holds all our lives in the balance of his hands. So we are dealing with a wonderful loving God, but also a just God who will dole out according to his law and his, uh, and his, um, paradigm and according to his justice system, not our justice system. So we tend to make God a pansy ways and that does not promote the fear of the Lord. We do want fear of the Lord because it has so many benefits. It says it tends to life. It keeps us from evil. It, um, it gives us sleep. It gives us uh, good judgment, sound decision making and it helps us to know the truth about how God runs his kingdom. Without that, we have no idea how he actually administrates the kingdom of God. It says in the word of God that flesh and blood will not inherit the kingdom. So we have to enter it through Jesus, who is the door to the kingdom. And the first thing we do is reverence our God. We give him all the reverence, honor that he is worthy of. Uh, the fear of the Lord is really something wonderful. Um, I know that from personal experience, it's the people you respect the most that are also easiest to love. So I just want to reiterate that. I want to put that out there. Let's pray and ask the Lord to put the fear of the Lord in us. Because with a fear come all the benefits of the seven spirits of God into our own spirits and connect us to our maker, our creator. In Ecclesiastes, it says for the whole council that is contained in the book of Ecclesiastes, it says, fear God and keep his commandments. And the Bible also says his commandments are not grievous. When Jesus was asked, what is, what is the main commandment? He said, love God and love your neighbor. So that's not grievous. And God is easy to love because he's so good. He's so good all the time. So let's embrace the fear of the lord as a beginning of understanding wisdom and knowledge counsel and might okay see you next time